sickness in my family, we have cancer in my family, and I believe that our praise, whatever you're going through right now, man, it does things. Even if you have nothing left in you right now, just whisper hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. If you have a lot of energy, say
it says, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up <laughs> till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. This is more of a declaration. It's not always what I want to do when I wake up in the morning. So let's declare. Maybe, maybe the Lord's going to wake us up this morning. Maybe the Lord is going to wake us up with His goodness. And sometimes we do that by decreeing a thing. So let's, let's declare and decree that His goodness is all around our lives. I don't want to throw Alyssa under the bus, but she woke up late too. <laughs> but we're still here. By the grace of a living God. Sure. I could have preached off of that. That's 
Both of them. Yeah, come on. God is good. We're, we're in a very crazy time. There's a lot of things happening around us and it would be easy to either move into fear or to want to um, just hide away and self-medicate in one way or another. And that's not even talking about your personal stuff you're going through. But I believe God's been speaking and it's going to jump off into your victory. And so what the Lord was doing this morning, I felt, was um, showing you how to respond first and then I'll tell you about it later. And that's often how God does. He'll show you something first and then when He teaches you about it, you, you're not going to throw it out like that's dumb, you know. He, because there's many times, many times your heart will apprehend. I'm talking about you know your spirit man and woman <laughs> will will apprehend things that your mind can't wrap around. You know your spirit will grab it first, and you don't have a theology for it quite yet. But, but God's like He's uniting us together in that. And there's a couple of things really quick that God wants to say. And, and this sort of thing can really grip us emotionally. And sometimes it's hard to know what to do with. But, um, you know, the, the Word of the Lord says for us to um, weep with those that weep and mourn with those that mourn and rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And so there's a place for sadness, there's a place for mourning, there's a place for I don't understand. Um, but this is the antidote, Amen. is to remember who God is and to choose with your chooser to come in the opposite of that and say, in spite of this, you know, right? So anyway, if, if I could have Kathy share first, okay. So the Lord is my shepherd, I do not want. Um, in the last two weeks I lost a friend. And I've been through the gamut of shock and grief. And then this last week, incredible anger. And I was so desperate yesterday. I said, Holy Spirit, you've got to give me something from your word that's going to stop some of this and help me understand. And he showed me Psalm 23, which is a great psalm, but I never got past the first verse. And he, and he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I do not want. And he said, what is it that you don't want for? I don't want um, for still waters. I don't want for him to restore my soul. I don't want for help in the midst of my grief. I don't want for all the things that I need because he's my shepherd. And he said, I want you to park there. And for those of you, a lot of people have been a lot of loss and you know, my friend was a drug overdose, and uh, it was just beyond my understanding, but um, he said, just remember, because I'm your shepherd, I do not want. Right on. Yeah, go for it. That was good. Um, I was just overwhelmed during the worship because I'm watching my elderly parents die right now, and my mom is probably moments away and we had the priest come yesterday because they're catholic and the priest said can i know your dad too and i didn't realize that my dad's really declining too he was there staring at her and 75 plus years of marriage 76 this month if they make it wow. um wow. thank you jesus but you know if you could find a transporter and you could just jump in it and get a heavenly perspective or be, you know, you've heard about people being translated into heaven and they're with Jesus for like an hour and then they come back. Praise and worship will do that for you. And I'm telling you, praise and worship like what was said this morning will transport you above your circumstances and give you something that you can't get here on earth. So no matter what you're going through, I know there's a lot of pain and a lot of loss going on right now and sickness and people struggling in Virginia and Diane and people that we're praying for. But if you could just step in in your own house, in your bathroom, in a shower, wherever you are, and just raise up your hands and say, Lord, you are my help in times of trouble and I'm just going to praise you no matter what. You will be transported. 
Thank you. Reverend, this is good, eh? We're going to have a great word coming uh, in just a moment here, and I don't want to take up her time. Uh, but we really do need to take a moment to respond to this. Is that, is that okay? All right. I saw that thumbs up. I saw that hand. Gosh. Okay, so we're going to take a moment to respond. Because the Lord said to me this morning, let the weak say I am strong. Man, there's anointing on that. I sound like a Pentecostal. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but honestly, let the weak say I am strong. And that's not a joke. That's in the Old Testament where the prophet was looking forward to a day where we will all be with the grace of God, with Holy Spirit inside of us. So let the weak say I am strong. If you're one of those people who have suffered loss or you feel traumatized by the current events and feel hopeless and helpless because of it. You know, we're a land of over 385 million people and with these, with the, the, uh, a few mass shootings, people are going, the world isn't safe. Well, I guess in one sense it isn't and I'm not trying to make light of it, but isn't it interesting that a few, a few things can happen and everybody's teeth is on edge, right? And it's not even in your backyard, so to speak. But yet fear can grip you. So why don't we do that, okay? If that's you, if you need, if you're going through something very personal or just the current events have gripped you, remember what Jesus has just done and you interact, interacting with Him. So can you do that? Can you raise a hand really quick? That's you. The rest of you are on the Jesus Hit Squad. You get to bless these people, okay? Let's do it. Let's take a few moments as we go back into a place of worship, proclamation, and declaring that our God reigns regardless of how we feel. In Jesus' name. Let's go for it. Let's take a moment. Seriously, let no one be left out. Christ in me, my hope. Oh, 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 oh,